All right, and what is up, guys? This is the first part of a four-part mini-series that we're going to do at the House Hall Brawl in between Season 1 and Season 2. Obviously, I'm without Danny Corkin today, our, one of our co-hosts. Uh, he's going to be gone for a couple months, like I said, in the last episodes, and he'll be back in April. Uh, Blake is on vacation, slacking off per usual, so it's only me today. Uh, your, co- your co-host, Austin Fugelstad, and I am happy to be joined by uh, the one and only one of the smarter mans on bear one of the smartest men on bears twitter uh contributor over the cap and blitznet uh he's got tons of legal uh nfl legal uh experience i mean this guy's been a pff he's been all over uh you know him as at brad otc on twitter brad spielberg brag how's it going man well thank you for that intro that was very gracious i appreciate it uh if you think I'm one of the smartest Bears followers, I could give you like ten guys to follow after the show. So uh, I mean, you know how it is on Bears Twitter business sometimes, business though. You're you're a reason. You're a voice of reason. Out of out I of people. It. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Happy to be on, and yeah, look, looking forward to a good discussion about the Bears and the cap and everything today. Yeah, but before we get into it, you know, I see, uh, you know, you have former Vikings uh, legal intern on your uh, Twitter page here, and I kind of want to talk about that. And, and you know, we we're talking about before the show. You know, you have business, and then you have the football side of a team. Can you go into kind of what that legal side looks like and what you guys uh, do? Because, I, I mean, I find that really intriguing. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I, first and foremost, uh, I think one interesting thing I learned is that every team is set up differently. So I guess I should say, like, I, this isn't speaking for all 32 teams. I, I think that, you know, they all operate differently. But I think legal department, obviously, every team has a legal department. So, yeah, we were talking a bit pre-show. Um, you know, I'm obviously a cap guy. I love, love front office, love salary cap. But... Uh, that was not what my internship was about, which was totally, totally cool, totally fine. Um, it was the actual business side, like legal transactions, um, you know, sponsorship agreements, partnership agreements, uh, anything from training camp to, you know, concessions in the stadium, things that a team deals with. Um, and I think, again, a unique aspect to the Vikings is that the Will family, the ownership group, um, they're a huge mag- they're New Jersey real estate magnates. Like, they're a huge... Um, you know, uh, you know, empire family. So there's a lot they have going on and you, you do get to see pieces of that here and there. Um, you know, for example, the new facility where I got to work is in a suburb of Minneapolis. It's not the stadium itself. It's in a, you know, this new awesome training facility, kind of like Lake Forest for the Bears. Uh, and they're building out the whole area around it. They're turning it into like a hotel and restaurants and <laughs> It's basically this huge, you know, piece of real estate that they've invested in. So you get to see things like that, which are really cool as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then, uh, you know, you're obviously a contributor at Over the Cap. What what do you guys do over there in terms of figuring out projections for salary caps? Or, you know, what do you do, I guess, in a general sense at for Over the Cap? So, yeah, Over the Cap uh, has been a great experience. Um, I, I met the founder and the, you know, the owner of, of the website. Uh, his name's Jason Fitzgerald. Uh, through law school, actually. So kind of, again, you know, Tulane Law School is where I go down in New Orleans. Um, how, how I met the Vikings and how I, you know, brokered that relationship, but also with the, uh, with Jason. So I, I think everyone rolls different. There's, there's a lot of different contributors. Uh, you know, I, I always, I know one guy I always talk about is the compensatory picks, uh, you know, for the Adrian Amos when he, you know, signed somewhere else. And I was talking about that all off season. Um, you know, that's a guy named Nick. So, Everyone has their own role. I, I guess myself, um, I, I do a lot of research. Um, Jason and I actually just finished a book uh, that's going to be coming out relatively soon. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, like the, actually this past week. So, um, you know, but yeah, research and some articles. I posted a few things, but the book's kind of taken up all our time this year. So, you know, yeah, projections for upcoming uh, contracts. You know, looking at free agents, uh, teams, team salary cap. So, you know, restricted free agent decisions, you know, un- unrestricted free agent decisions, of course, uh, you know, um, cap casualties, which is what we call guys that get cut basically for cap reasons. Uh, you know, we're always looking at things of that nature, you know, and, and then doing research in into all sorts of areas. That's so you, I don't can are you can you tell us what 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 the name of the book is that's coming out or are you wait until it's officially released It's actually got a the title we haven't even agreed to the title yet um it, so it's about the NFL draft you know I can tell you about it um it, it's basically about um I don't know to, to, to boil it down simply there's like a, a draft value chart where each pick has a value uh Jimmy Johnson created the most known one if you google Jimmy Johnson draft trade chart you'll you'll get a result immediately 
Uh, but basically, long story short, when they were trying to make draft trades originally, there was no kind of understood currency of what each pick was worth, right? So if you wanted pick three and you had pick eight, you're like, all right, if I give you eight plus what equals three? You know, there was no understanding of what. So Jimmy Johnson and, and some other guys with the Cowboys in the 80s and 90s um, st- kind of looked back at previous trades and like made a, you know, a, a codification of, of the trades. But there was no evidence that that was ever based on any actual data or anything like that. So the, the beginning of the book is we have, we have a rookie wage scale now, right? So we know how much every rookie is going to get paid, uh, you know, in his, in his rookie contract. So these draft picks, they can be a commodity. We can, we can actually figure out a value and not just, you know, have an arbitrary number that was assigned to it. And, and so it, you know, it obviously goes into more than that, but, um, yeah, really about understanding the value of draft picks, the, the the value, the surplus value you get, you know, the discount on a guy like a Patrick Mahomes, like how much money you're really saving on that that MVP season, stuff like that. That sounds awesome. And <clears throat> I'm going to go back to your point in the beginning of the show. You, if you can name me 10 guys on Bears Twitter that are smarter than that, I, I would be very impressed. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to that. Uh, keep an eye on that for sure. Do you have a set release date on that or are you guys working on finishing that up? We're hoping like April, March, April, around the draft is the goal. Uh, yeah. It'll be like an ebook on Amazon. So it, it'll be out. Uh, that, that's the target for now. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Thank Looking you, forward to that. Um, yeah. All right. So getting into the draft, uh, or get, get the draft. Now I'm on the draft. Getting into <laughs> cap, you know, this this ep, this little mini episode here is going to be dedicated to money. We're going to talk about cap spaces and, and you know, what's what's good for the Bears right now. And, and <laughs> this is Brad's specialty. So getting right into it before, you know, the people that – don't fully understand cap spaces, dead cap, you know, salary cap, all that, all this cap hit. Give me a, a quick synopsis, uh, cap 101. What would you tell someone who's kind of familiar but not super, you know, into the cap and, and what goes on in the, on the money side of the, the NFL? <clears throat> yeah, I hear you. I think that um, the way that they've broken down contracts can just sometimes not be super approachable. And so it can be confusing at first. And so people are going to get turned off by it. But it's a there's a few you know a couple of rules that can kind of get you like most of the way there. Um, you know I've only st- I've only started researching and, and and really learning about it for probably two years now, uh, a little over two years now. So um, I mean obviously now I kind of have the law school stuff too, so that's a different element. But you know it's really just you have a base salary and then there's bonuses that come in and then there's different ways to calculate that versus cash payout and then you know calculating it on the salary cap. So. Um, Yeah, I mean, the big thing really, like you mentioned, dead cap. Um, So when you give someone a bonus, it prorates, means it it splits up equally uh, over the amount of years in the contract. So every year is going to have a base salary. This guy makes, you know, $2 million just, you know, as a salary, normal thing. We're also, we gave him a a $9 million signing bonus when he signed on his three-year deal. So against the cap, there will be $3 million in the first, second, and third year, and in cash, he'll actually get all nine million of that right up front, pretty much in the first month of the, of the contract. So it's like little things like that. I'm not going to go into every example, but little things like that um, that enable a team to manipulate the cap, you know, the salary cap versus the actual cash expenditure. Uh, and really, that's all it is: is teams finding a way to, you know, pay got pay guys within this 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 arbitrary fake construct, the salary cap. Um, and had you know different cash payouts, but have it fit underneath a salary cap, and that's kind of the whole, you know, that's that's pretty much it in a you know very boiled down version. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it makes sense, and I'm sure a lot of people, uh, a lot of light bulbs. I mean, I, you know, understanding how how the bonuses are prorated and stuff like that. That's some some awesome stuff. Uh, you know, moving from some questions on Twitter uh, at lberry underscore forty. You know, he he just he's asking about how much money the Bears are expected to have this off season. With the, like you said, the uh, the cap casualties, the expected cuts, obviously long retired. Gabriel, you know, we're not sure there. Prince, we're not sure what's going to happen there. So is there a, a ballpark of what we can expect uh, heading into the offseason? Yeah, uh, and, and you mentioned the three names that I, I kind of have. I mean, long is, a, long is a for sure now. You know, we know he's definitely done. Uh, and, and then Gabriel and Prince are the two that I kind of have circled. Uh, you know, with those three moves, they're hovering around $35 million uh, in cap space. That would be with 38 out of the 53 roster spots filled. Uh, you know, if you account for those three guys not being on the roster anymore, uh, that number also accounts for uh, the Eddie Jackson uh, extension, uh, as well as the Kyle Fuller uh, restructure. So, 
uh, it's taking you know, up to date. Again, it's, it's a ballpark number. We're never exactly on on the dollar. Um, but yeah, those three moves happen. They, they'd be around there uh, with not a lot of starter positions. Of you know, this team is still pretty set at a lot of places. Um, but yeah, so so that's what they would be looking at. Yeah, and with that said, you know, like you said, they're going to go into the offseason. They're going to go into next season with a lot of these guys coming back. I think next year is when we're going to have to worry about a lot of these. Well, with Eddie Jackson resigning, not so much so, but we'll have to worry about a couple contracts. Uh, how are your initial thoughts on, on the season, for, you know, the 2019 season is sev- severely underperforming and disappointing. Uh, what are your initial thoughts before we get into these uh, individual contracts and stuff like that? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, it was definitely disappointing. Um, you know, there was obviously a lot of promise with this team we saw a lot of growth last year you know 2017 they had about a top 10 defense and you knew with the addition of you know one of the best defensive players in the league they were going to be special uh they immediately were you know the new coach and the new system and and all the new weapons kind of found a way to make things work uh you know that first year and so obviously you know the excitement was real i don't think it was at all you know, unfair for people to be extremely excited about the season. And it was rational because even if the defense, basically what, what a lot of people said is what happened where the defense was like number one by a, a magnitude last year, they were still like the sixth or seventh best defense this year. Like they still were an elite squad. Um, but the, everyone was kind of saying the offense needs to go from 23rd, 24th best, depending on, you know, what, what you trust out there. Uh, which is what it was in 20, 2018. I'm using football outsiders, um, you know, team offensive efficiency, uh, DVOA, uh, to like, you know, 12th. And, and so if the offense makes that jump to, you know, the top th- the top third of the league, and if the defense stays in that top, you know, quarter of the league, there's no reason this team won't win 12 games again. Um, I, I mean, that I think that's still true, right? I, I mean, they were like the 31st or 32nd yeah. offense. Yeah, yeah it was right in front of like my, yeah, right in front of like Miami and Washington. Yeah. Yeah, and, and still managed to go 500. So, uh, I mean, I will say I'm not, not to toot my own horn. I had him at nine and seven in my in my preseason prediction on, on the blitz net, simply because of just uh, not even you know expecting regression. And, and again, I'm not a huge Trubisky guy, but I, I'd be lying if I said I thought he'd be what he was this year. Um, you know, I thought he'd just be average. And again, an average quarterback probably wins elite, at least 10, 11 games on this team. Um, but I just thought, I mean, the schedule, a little bit part of it, and they did kind of play some some, some good games, some tough teams. But I, I don't know. I just expect there to be injuries, and there, and there kind of were, and there really weren't last year. So it was disappointing, but I don't know. I think it's tough. when, when you're Unless you're a Patriots fan, following up 12 wins and 12 wins again, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you said, uh, unless you're a Patriots fan. Um, and, 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 you know, speaking of that defense, Eddie Jackson just got a contract extension. Uh, can you give us kind of an insight into what that extension looks like? And then also, if you can, that Kyle Fuller reconstruction and what it does, what it did for our uh, for the Chicago Bears cap space? Yeah, sure. So the Eddie Jackson extension was four years, fifty eight point four million uh, in new money, uh, which means that, you know, he was still under contract for 2020. It adds four more on um, uh, to the end of his rookie deal. And so he's under contract for five you know, total years before New Year's. And it is the highest average per year for safeties in the NFL uh, at 14.6 million uh, average per year. But it's honestly still a great deal, in my opinion. Uh, I like the structure of it uh, in that. So we talked about signing bonuses. So getting to dead money really quick. I'll try not to be too complicated in, in, in this talk. <laughs> but when you have a signing bonus that we talked about, we talked about prorating. You don't want to have money that prorates into you know five years down the line because, as, as you all know, you never know what's going to happen with an NFL guy's career five years from now. Even a guy like Eddie Jackson, I mean, total stud, young stud, but he'd be 30 in the, in the fifth year of this deal. So how you create dead money is you give a lot of guys big guaranteed money in signing bonuses, and then you know that all comes due later in later years when you're cutting guys. and Because that money, you know, again, it's not money, it's not cash, but it's still there cap-wise. Yeah. Anyways, a- anyways they, they structured it well. They kept his 2020 cap hit low. Uh, which which make me assume they're trying to make some more moves, uh, and so that's you know an important aspect of it as well. For Fuller, uh, what they did there is a very common type of restructure, which is well, it actually it actually wasn't, but I'll, the most common type of restructure is this. So there's base salary, which I, like I talked about, which is you know like like you and I get just a little bit bigger, but in every two weeks you get a paycheck base. That's your base salary during the season. 
um, you take that and, and convert it into a bonus so that it does the same prorating thing we've been talking about. So let's say a guy has a $7 million base salary in, in 2020. You take $6 million of that and you say, this is now a signing bonus or an option bonus, uh, and, and we're going to prorate it over the remaining years of the deal. So with Fuller's, there's three years left. This is what they did. It, they converted. They took six million and made it into four one point five million dollar, you know, prorations. So it saves four and a half million in twenty twenty, but like you know, like we just talked about, it, it creates a potential for dead money down the line. But you know, that's kind of the that's kind of the game you play. That's kind of what it's all about. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. And then I guess along with that, on the other side of the ball, Kyle Long obviously just retired. Uh, how, if at all, does that affect the Bears' cap? Do they do they have to pay? off any more of his uh, contract or does that kind of just go uh, just go away after his recent retirement? So retirement's interesting. It, it's going to be treated the same as a cut. So you've probably seen around Twitter, you know, $8.1 million in savings. Uh, it was actually an option year that was coming up. It wasn't even a real, a, a true year. And they were going to, they obviously were going to decline the option. Um, but yeah, so it'll be treated the same. Teams can actually try to recoup uh, signing bonus, like prorated signing bonus money. And they'll get salary cap relief for it, but there was like uh, not a lot of money left in terms of signing bonus, and they're not they're not going to do that to him. Teams teams rarely rarely do that. Um, I, I think Calvin Johnson's the last example I can remember, and it was kind of because he retired so quickly after the deal, and and they felt wronged by him or whatnot. But like even an Andrew Luck had like like 15, 20 million of that, and they they didn't do anything about it. Um, so yeah, so no, his, he'll be treated the same as a cut, eight point one million in savings for Kyle Long. Okay, awesome. And that question was from uh, at Nico underscore Stadler on Twitter. Um, all right, moving into free agency. There are this is a loaded free agency class. Uh, you're going to have guys. Uh, I Austin Hooper could become one of the highest paid tight ends in the league. Uh, looking at the guys uh, open here uh, right now, it's Travis Kelsey at around nine point three or nine point four million a year. Um, who do you see the Bears potentially targeting this free agent? Do you see him more going maybe towards a Hunter Henry, someone who'd be a little expensive, but not overly, you know, not crazy expensive, or maybe like a Luke Wilson and Nick Vanette, someone would be a little, a little around Ben Bronica range. Uh, what do you, what do you kind of see them doing here in terms of what they have in the cap and, and what's available? It's a, it's a great question. Uh, it might be the question of the off season. <laughs> I mean, obviously the tight end position is, is so important and, yeah, I think they alluded to that a little bit in their post game pre- or postseason presser. Uh, you know, they obviously didn't get into details on much, but I do think that there is the potential they either go top of the market route and they seriously consider a, trying to poach a Hooper. Um, you know, the, you, the Henry. You can see increase. that happening. I mean, it's I think it's possible. Um, you alluded to it a little bit. So uh, again, I, uh, the, the top APY tight end is Jimmy Graham, actually at ten million. Jimmy Graham, um, okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, I see that. I'm 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 in by. T- <laughs> I'm I'm on uh, I'm on your arch nemesis there you looking, go. At, yeah. looking at looking at the text here. Yeah, I just figured. Yeah, figure out. yearly Jimmy Graham. <laughs> at the Sorry, I'm just Kelsey, hard stuff. I'm yeah, just Kelsey, hard Kelsey's time. at the top with total money. I don't know this okay. stuff. That's why Brad's okay. on the show. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So the, the the beauty, but so the crazy thing is Jimmy Graham signed a 10 million. You know, we talked about average per year. He signed that with this with the Saints back in like 2014 and then signed it again the same amount with the Packers the position hasn't had a market reset or you know basically like we saw with safety where all you know guys got paid like way more than they were previously because finally a stud came along or a stud or two came along and, and basically reset the position market so that still hasn't happened at tight end and it's about to uh, I mean Kittle and that draft class that it's like a, Njoku and Kittle and uh, oh, I guess O.J. Howard, I mean, they don't use him anymore. But there's a bunch of, like, first-round tight ends and good players that are coming through soon. And Kittle's going to get, like, a bananas contract. So if you can get a Hooper, like you mentioned, even if it's top of market, it, it still, in my opinion, wouldn't be, like, a bad deal. And I would bet you a lot of money that in a year it'd be, like, the seventh or eighth highest paid tight end because five or six guys would fire through and get paid more. So I think tight end's an interesting one to watch for that reason. At least that's my opinion. Um, or they go the second second tier route, like you mentioned, which was super active last year. There was like the Jesse James, Tyler Croft, like CJ Azoma kind of range of six million a year. I love that route too. I mean, the Lions signed Jesse James for like seven million a year and then drafted Hawkins an eighth overall. Like 
teams realize these days tight end is an important important position. I'd have no problem if they if they sign one and draft one high. I re- I really wouldn't. Yeah, and and it's it's actually pretty crazy to look at some of these names at the top of this list. Uh, Jordan Reed, who I don't. I mean, barely right. played yeah. in 2019. Cameron Brait, who I was found after Evans went down. Um, yeah, it's it's Kyle Rudolph is yep. is up at the top of this yep. list too. Rudolph so yeah, when, yep. Yep. Hooper Hooper this year and and next year for sure. When when Kittle and that class start when these guys start signing these contracts, they're gonna go way up. So um, I would I would like them to take a stab for sure on these high end uh, high tier tight ends. So we'll have to see. Uh, and then into the most probably controversial obviously most important position in the nfl but in chicago super controversial you can uh, kind of make the case that we have a curse maybe it's about time pace takes a really big leap for a quarterback for a proven quarterback not a leap for a guy that's going to be a project like we did a couple years ago um this this uh this free agency has you know guys like marcus mariota case keenum um, how, how do you how do you see the Bears attacking this? Do you see them maybe trading and trading and bringing in an Alex Smith who's I think he's 16 million a year. Cam Newton's at around 20. You know what what, what do you see the Bears uh, the Bears kind of doing here in terms of this QB position? Because Chase Daniel and um, Tyler Bray are both more than likely going to be gone uh, this off season. Yeah, I mean obviously this is the big question of the off season. I mean, they could go a million different ways. Uh, I think in the same way we just talked about, I, I mean, they could try to take a stab at a legit guy, try to pry away a Teddy Bridgewater or something like that. I, I think the more likely is the route you mentioned there. Go with the Case Keenum, Andy Dalton. Uh, yeah, tr- maybe even try to trade for, I think Fitzgerald, they love him in Miami. But, like, just try try to find a bridge and, and know it's a bridge. Um, and like you said, not take a stab on a project. I mean, I'm personally not a big Mariota guy, but to each their own. Um, I'm, I'm not either, so I'm just... I'd rather just start Trubisky at that, at that yeah. point. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I, I think that's the move. Um, I think that in a lot of ways, it also just shows you if, if there's other issues with the team. I mean, I'm a big, big, big Nagy defender. I, I'll say that. I'm not going to you know shy away from that. I tweet it that way, so I'll say it on here. But but I mean, if you have a... if you a case Keenum and, and you saw, maybe get a Pat Shermer OC and you still have the 31st offense next year, then I'm hammering the panic button. So there, there's, there's different directions to go. I, I just, the one thing I would say definitively is I just, I hope they don't draft one in the second round. It, there's just, there's just, it's really not worth investing. I mean, I, I talked about the book, you either take one top 10 or, or t- take a project like a Minshew in the sixth round, or just try to sign one. Like you just, you don't find like second tier, like kind of talented and like kind of smart, but, I mean, like, that's a Dalton or a Carr at absolute best case. Like, that's your, like, dream workout with a second-round quarterback. So that's the one thing I will say. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. And and guys like Anthony Gordon, Jordan Love will be there in the later rounds. So we'll have to see what they do for sure. Uh, Brad, with all this going on in the offseason, last thing I'll ask, what are you looking forward to most uh, this coming offseason? I guess Bears specific. Uh, uh, I talked about it recently, but I – it's funny because he's not even a free agent, but I really think they're going to look to extend Allen Robinson. And I'm just curious what that would look like or how they approach that. I, this could be just me making this up and, and maybe just wishful thinking. Uh, but they're going into the last year of that deal. Uh, you know, he signed a three-year contract coming off that torn ACL. I think first year you saw, you know, he, he, was, he was getting back in the swing of things. And, and this year he looked like a monster like he did in what, 2016 when he when he had, like, what, 10 touchdowns and, yeah, 1,500 yards, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I think he's a priority, even as a, even not as a free agent. Uh, I think when you have a premier wide receiver like that that can that can make every play, um, I, I mean, they should go out and try to lock him up. So I'm excited to see if they do are, – are that proactive, even though they do have other things to address. I think it would be cool for them to recognize that even with all the things they have to address, they still need to get that done. Do you have a ballpark guess as to what – they would potentially sign him to if they were to extend him now? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am going to dive into it more. It's probably going to be one of the first, you know, articles I put out on Over the Cap for the, for, uh, the offseason, which is coming soon, or, you know, is here, I guess, for us. Um, <laughs> I think like 17 and a half to 18 and a half million a year um, on a three or four year, depending on what they're, you know, they're trying to do lengthwise. Um, you know, he went short the first time. Maybe he tries to get that, that big payday. But yeah, I mean, he 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 belongs in in my opinion in that upper echelon conversation. 
you know, not 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 twenty million. And I think Julio got up to twenty two. Michael Thomas is at nineteen and point two five, and you're going to see some more guys climb there. He's not that that upper tier, but he's right there. Yeah, yeah, that makes uh, that makes sense. It's, it seems like a lot, but I think that's pretty good for someone who's been uh, the most consistent player on our team since uh, since we signed him. So, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, now uh, Brad, I mean, I'm you know we talked about before. I wasn't sure how these mini series are going to go. That was great. And you f- have for sure made your case to be like a top three <laughs> smartest Bears Twitter <laughs> personality after that. That was great. I mean, you and Rob Schmitz are like right, right up, right up near the top uh, for that stuff. Both of you guys are really good. Brad, I, I really appreciate it. You can follow Brad at Brad OTC if you don't already. Um, he's got tons of information about cap, about contracts, about and and more over there. So go follow him. Check out his stuff and keep an eye out for his book in April. Looking forward to that and and. Uh, you know, having a nice read in the spring and getting yourself ready for the uh, for the next season and the draft. So, looking forward to that. But Brad, I appreciate you being our uh, our first guest for this little mini series. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, your work this off season. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I'm glad I could come on. <laughs>